Today I might have something really interesting for you, at least something very unique. I'm talking about the Lenovo Yoga Book. And there was a lot of talk about this device on IFA 2016 due to its very unique set of features with the way how the stylus works and the notepad and even an ink tip along with the Halo keyboard and so on. It's not the typical Android or Windows convertible or something like that. And that's why I decided to make this an extended version presence video because I got it yesterday at 10 p.m. when I came home from work and I've used it until 3 a.m. just to to actually find out the best possible use case scenario and what you could use this for and how you could use it for because it's something so different that I've ever used that it will be really interesting to get a little bit of a closer look until I get it done for the full review and the huge shout out to Cyberport for making this review possible because if I would have waited for Lenovo's German press agency I could wait a long time but they just changed that and maybe it will get better but something really interesting and that's why I actually want to go into that just real quick get off the specs. I want to quickly get into the boxing because it's actually quite nice and if you think everything is overexposed there is a good reason for that and I am sorry for it but my camera just can't handle it any better way. Here we have the charging cables and so on, the charger as well. There was here also the notepad of course the tablet. Here we have some paperwork and the SIM card eject tool along with the compartment for the stylus along with some spare tips and also the ink one. So it's quite nice in my opinion. It was done quite nice. Let's get into the device real quick. I will get into the keyboard as well and the stylus later on. But quickly I want to cover the hardware. And the reason everything is a little bit overexposed is later on for the display. But you will get that. Okay, here we have the micro USB. Here we have the SIM card tray. Here we have micro HDMI. One of the two speakers since the second one is here. So stereo, power button and volume rocker both feel and sound nice. And the headphone jack. In the middle you can see two more microphones and you can see some kind of cutout but since as you can already see this device is so thin it's a little bit harder to open it but it definitely feels good this is just plastic but the device itself feels very compact and way more lightweight as i would have expected with 665 grams since it has some kind of keyboard as well so definitely nice but there are some minor quality issues maybe because it's one of the first badges because as you can see here there is a little bit of a gap here between the two parts which is visible and not everything seems to align properly because if I actually turn it on the other way around since you can use it also in tablet mode you will notice that here the gap seems to be a little bit smaller than on this side and yesterday when I actually used it for a while it actually had a way bigger gap and everything here was kind of standing off and you could then press it and make it a little bit of a cracking sound you can maybe hear but I guess overnight it settled a little bit down it's a way better here we have of course the wrist rand, wristband hinge that works out quite nice so far so let's open it and get into the display and I want to cover the keyboard a little bit later but here is already the reason why I have the brightness on the camera turned up so high because I'm using 100% brightness but it is not the display's fault because the display is very very bright and the same goes also for the keyboard background here because believe me it is very bright and in reality I see it way easier so that's a caveat of my camera so let's get I would say quickly into the display first so I can show you that because it's a really lovely display high quality it's maybe just 1080 but in normal use so far from a normal laptop use distance I found it to be really nice and sharp the white point is really nice not too white not too cold and the blacks are quite deep with no backlight bleed or anything like that and the colors as you can maybe see here really nicely saturated so I definitely like the display so far of course it's glossy but that is fine so far and the display so far is absolutely top but I will get into all of that a little bit more of course in the final review this is just a quick teaser and I want to actually cover more the unique features of it but I wanted to cover the basics so let's check the sound here real quick Okay, I think one thing was obvious, if I turn off the Dolby Atmos software, sound is very weak. But with that turned on, the sound is really, really nice and rich, very loud. I heard some little bit of crackling, but I guess this was more due to, due to my audio source. But so far, the speakers seem to be really, really nice. Performance, if we cover that real quick, the odd thing here is how bad 
Chrome performs because I don't know why. Let me quickly zoom in a little bit for me, you to make it easier to see. And the scrolling here is terrible. This is not good. At some situation yesterday it was fine, so I'm not quite sure. I will for the full review maybe factory reset once again because this can't be possibly the software. I've used lower powered Intel hardware and the scrolling was way better. And especially if I use my browser here, as you can see, in the same software or in the same page, the scrolling is absolutely brilliant. As you can see here, even while rendering, this is absolutely smooth, absolutely flawless. And this browsing experience was absolutely top notch. Not sure why Chrome behaves like that because all the other apps work out just fine. As you can see here, Phoenix works just fine. Scrolls, buttery smooth. Same goes for Palabra. Google Plus definitely can't handle it all the way. As you can see here, the free column design, I've not seen any device being able to really handle. So the smarter ones just use two columns for some reason with a different set of DPI, I guess. But this absolutely fine. So every app I ran so far runs absolutely fine besides Chrome. So I guess this is a little bit of an issue that we can fix. So we've covered that. I can't really say anything about a battery life yet. It should be decent because the battery after all is quite big. So now let's get into the one thing here first that would be the keyboard because of course here this will be a little bit overexposed and you will won't be able to see but i want to go into the keyboard here now because at first i thought that this halo keyboard since you won't have any haptic feedback is terrible to use but it's actually not quick thing about the design of course as you can see you have the quartz version since it is from germany and you can change the brightness if we go into the settings here real quick you can see these Halo keyboard options, you can make it vibrate on key press and there are touch tones. You can adjust the brightness. This is maximum, but believe me, in reality, you can easily see it, no problems here. You can change the vibration intensity, typing speed, keyboard sensitivity and all that, which is nice. One thing that I have to mention though, if we quickly check that. If I type like this, maybe you can hear it, but I don't think the vibration and the tone is actually in sync with each other. So I decided to use the touch tones because if I just use the vibration, it felt just off because the whole vi whole keyboard is vibrating and it's quite an odd loud vibration. Of course, you can change the intensity, but I found that to be not all that great. So as you can see here, and it felt just a little bit out of sync, which it feels way better here with the clicky sound and this changes with the volume of the device though so you can see that if we go low with the brightness which i just can for some reason due to being in the software it also makes the click light but now let's talk about how well you can type on this because as you can see here if you would type like this you would make after all a lot of mistakes and that's why i found it just not to be all the great at first maybe but it's actually really good because here you have these really nice additions because this makes it really handy to type because as you can see here, see so your one, two and three. And then you can just press the one to enable this one or select this one, for example, here two, and you can see three, and then you go, go back to two. And this makes typing very easy because if you type like this, you always see a suggestion here and then you have just to press the key. I personally, since I type in two languages, used Swift key. And that one works really nice as well because if we just show that off real quick, you will see that as well, giving suggestions. They, they don't always appear for some reason. Maybe sometimes. Okay, now it appears. And let's try, for example, house. And here you have to press though on the screen, which is better done on the inbuilt solution. But the good thing here is it always takes the middle one if you type something. So this is okay. But I think after all, for most people, if you just type in one language, the touch pal solution will work out really nice because you can Take the selections without getting on the screen and that makes it definitely way more handy. So the typing experience actually is not that bad because the autocorrect works good and in terms of size it's not bad. It's a little bit more cramped towards this side but this is due to the due to the, UL, the German layout. But if you just quiet something, the lazy dog jumped over the quick brown and as you can see i type bad and this is due, mostly due to the 
demonstration because I can actually type not all that bad on it. Of course, we also have a trackpad. Not quite so sure because we have the touch screen and touch pads on Android, in my opinion, don't make so much sense. But believe me, you can. Yeah. <laughs> This is a little bit of an issue for me because sometimes the Z is a Y due to the different layouts. I got it right yesterday once again. Believe me, it works out quite nice. So I need a little bit more. This is just because I don't really know what to show off in this video. Of course, we also have some extra keys as you can see here. We have a function lock as well, but you can change the volume here. You can mute the mic. You can also set the display brightness, search button. You can turn off Wi-Fi. You have here an button that gives you all the apps. You have the menu key to get quick access to the keyboard or the keyboard key because the main, the, let me get it right. Here is the actual menu key and of course we have to press and enter. So this actually works better than expected. It's not the best typing experience, but it's sometimes better than an on-screen display. And I would say for mid-long typing, it's quite okay. Not for really long-term typing, but it's definitely not a bad solution. So what I would say now, it is time to actually cover the pen. First of all, usually it's closed and you can rotate this, not that it really does make any difference. And there are two different kinds of tips because as you can see here, there is this one is the ink tip and this one is the one that you can usually use. And how this works is like the following. You long press this and now the app will turn. So this is the default app. And now you could just write on this. And some people wanted to know how you could actually do it because usually people just scribble. But you can actually type with it quite nice. You should maybe use a finite. And it has pressure sensitivity. And I'm really, unf really sorry for this to actually be overexposed right now. But that's just the way it works. But as you can see, you can type on it. Let's try something. Let's show off the... Of course, you can type a lot more precise, especially if you use the paper later on that I will show you. But it works really precise. I didn't get any issues. You have spiral points, as you can see. If I type lightly, if I press, it works. I'm not quite too sure how many steps there are. It doesn't seem to be all that sensitive, but it works out really nice. You can draw with it, which I just can't, but I can show you a few of the disasters that I made yesterday. I deleted most of them, though. As you can see here, this is actually a quite nice show off because with this along you get the notepad. And the way this works, you can replace those because you can buy them on your own. And you could use though any other paper. And just to show off that this actually works, let me get some simple plain paper. Rip that out of here. And if I would now, as you can see here, the tip will appear on the same space. And if I would now write something, it will do it. And the great thing is something that I didn't even mention yet. If you type or if you write on this, it actually feels like on paper. This is the best experience I've had so far that a tip of a stylus feels like paper. You can, by the way, if you are asking yourself, you can use it here as well. There is an option to turn that on and off though. But I think of course that's not definitely nearly as precise because you don't have the pressure points here. And as you can see here, it has quite some delay. So it works a lot better here. Absolutely fine. And you, of course, can use different colors, but it works if you use the ink pen that I will show off just in a second on any sort of paper. And of course, on paper, it feels even more so like writing with a pen on paper. But to show off the notepad, because this attaches magnetically, but the problem is since I've already made, and I can show you that as well, this drawing, as you can see, this is exactly the same. But the problem is this is held via magnets kind of at some place, but not the same, because if I try to get this line done, you will see I actually got it quite right this time, as you can see here. But if I wouldn't have properly aligned this, maybe let's say a little bit off, and I want to try to make this line now, as you can see, I'm not hitting it right, because let's try this once again. Here I have this line, and if I try to get it, I, okay, I can't do it, but as you can see here, this, I am off by just a few millimeters. So. That's why it's a little bit harder to maybe if you write it once to actually make some notes again on that. That is a little bit of an issue for me. That's that's something I noticed. So make your note once or you get a problem because it won't just align. Or you maybe sometimes a little bit beforehand have to just make it align. And then it works out really nice. But let's actually get to the tip now because it works really great 
on the surface but now let's try the ink because that's definitely a unique feature you can easily take this out just placing it this and hold getting a little bit off axis and pull it out now here we have the ink tip and you can easily put this on how this actually works is still a mystery to me because if we go and open a new document and open something I made some notes just to try so let's get into the next one and we should get into portrait and you can see that and now things are okay so since it is now what it is in terms of alignment you should do all your notes without taking this off again so let's try something and I will write this let's say this this is and of course I should select the screen that was my mistake but it should work or wait okay so we have to sometimes since I moved that you have to press this button to enable actually that this works the problem now is and maybe that's not even that bad let's actually open a new one I've already written something here and you say you I don't have that here so just write over it again so this is a tests of the ink tip and as you can already see it looks exactly the same it actually looks nicer if you use a proper for example here a proper writing piece but I don't have the nicest writing of course but a good thing here is what you maybe can see it's a little bit overexposed you have some dots so you can see kind of the outline because you could get over it actually because here it ends and if I write here it's sometimes on some apps it's already outside but as you can see this is actually the exact same size as the display so if we make any scribbling here on the paper they will appear here and they look exactly the same so how this actually works is not and now since this is just a normal ink pen you can write as you want to so once again let's try So that is really, really nice and handy. But what, what if you don't want to use the screen? That's also no problem because if you just turn it off and I hope I will get this demonstration done right. What you have to do is now it is turned off. You could now just place this on top. Of course, align it once again. And let me actually get this a little bit, a little bit less exposed. And what you have to do now is press the button this means that the ink is now enabled and you could now write just something so once again once again let's try this so you can see i wrote this now what about now what you have to do is now press the volume rocker up then you should hear a vibration and the note should be on the screen but i actually think I did that wrong because I think that this has to be actually lighted up. I, so I got that wrong. So let's try it once again. Okay. Here it is. Did it work? And I definitely, as you can already see, didn't really <laughs> properly align now. Okay. If you now press the volume up, you hear, you hear the vibration. And if we open this display now, the note should be as it is on the notepad. Is it there? Lenovo note saver, tap to view it, and you can see it, it is there. Uh, as you can see here, no. <laughs> okay, I wrote it actually the other way around, so that was my mistake, but you can usually just rotate that, that is no problem here, as you can see, Okay, here it is. Did it work? Of course, since I took it off the alignment and I've already talked about it, it's not good. You can actually still write on this now, but I don't want to risk it and I have to quickly ch or check beforehand if I do that, if we could still actually use this with the ink pen. I don't think because it works, but then you will scribble on your mat. So I would not make that, but I definitely find this to be really handy because if you just want to have a notepad, in the closed mode and write some things down you can make this you can make this like for example here make some pointers and afterwards it will be saved so this is definitely nice 
but there are a few downsides that I noticed because of course you can use it also the other way around since I'm left-handed I have the notepad here on this side but for example it says that you can use it in different apps if we for example go into one just real quick so let's enter for example let's say the Google Docs document because this is something where I've noticed an issue if we go into Docs open a new doc and now you want to read something that you have written for example here blah, 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 blah. I wrote that and I want to make some notes now the problem is what you can do now is press this button and this will appear and this means that you can now use the notepad and write your notes as you can see here and you can see a small little preview here and it will exactly do what you do in exactly the size but you don't see that so I could now watch a YouTube video, browse the web or do whatever I want and still make my notes. So if I watch a video or watch anything else or make some research on the net, surf something, I could scribble down my notes and they will be already saved. But the problem is, and this is something that I hope will be changed, if I now press the app, I will get into that. And as you can see here, it is done. That is cool. But the problem is, how do I get back? Because if I would go now back to my app, it will just open another note. And I can't really continue working on this note again. That is something that I just don't get why. Because there is this button, once again. And yeah, as you can see here, if I would go now back to the Notes app, Untitled Document, what can you do now? Nothing. Because the problem is that you usually have this button here and you could now do it again but the problem is that the note is just not the same one anymore so this could in some way i guess easily be fixed they just have to make the option to use this in the same way but i'm getting way too long already about this so i think i've covered the most important parts here you can quickly switch those out that is no problem at all that works out really good and then you can use it just normally and if you are a note taker this definitely could be very handy for you of course once again turn it off and you can write so different colors also work with of course you should hit it right works without any problem so to get this covered since this will be actually longer than the actual review but then I can refer to this video so the hardware on its own for now seems to be really really nice solidly built maybe not perfect in terms of quality control but since this is the first batch it's nothing major because i did not really notice it so much but actually now you can see it now the gap here is a little bit bigger and it will click so if the device lays for a while now like it did yesterday it will settle and it will be gone but it feels great in the hand it's super thin typing on the keyboard is actually better than expected still not super great but for a 10 inch it's not always great anyways even with a proper one display seems really good so far sound seems really good so far the performance in everything besides chrome seems really good so far but i think the chrome thing can be fixed i don't think that can be the normal battery life will be, will be seen in the review and the rest as well but the notepad feature is definitely something very unique that works way better than expected and is something really unique and if you are someone who really uses uses notepads but wants them also digitally stored this is cool and of course you could draw really nice nicely because there is also let me quickly show it off for example a drawing app that allows you way more than what i showed off like i said opening it is not all that easy let's quickly get that done as you can see here and there is this outrage app and there will be maybe in the future some more things that work with this but as you can see here now we have different tips that you can select with that and then you could just draw in every color you want you can choose that here for example and here we have different brushing methods as you can see here as well it's a little bit more delayed as you can see it's not all that quick but it's really nice because it's actually very precise but it's really really nice you could do the same here on the screen but it's even more so delayed and not precise as you can see it definitely is better here with this one what i've noticed though the touch precision towards the bottom is not perfect because on so many situations 
I had trouble actually hitting the buttons right because as you can see here now nothing happened. So sometimes you will have to just press twice as you can see here. Due to the edges, it doesn't seem to be all that responsive to the screen, but this is not, not a big thing. So that was it. If you have any further questions, what I should check for the review, please let me know because I've covered what I thought was interesting to show off or maybe helpful. So definitely a unique product. Let me know what you think of it. If you have a use case scenario for that, because I saw some people who wanted to know if you can write on it. And yes, you can write on it as you could do on paper. The problem is if you do it on the Halo keyboard side, you don't really have something that makes you easy to align it and write. Because I noticed that I drift off, which I usually do on paper if I wouldn't have the lines. With the notepad, that issue is done. And you can just buy new ink tips as well. I don't think they are all that expensive and the notepads can be bought as well. I'm not quite sure how many pages this has. I think like maybe 30 or so or 20. And you can buy just new ones. So let me know. It was super long, but maybe it was helpful. But that's what it is. Okay, until next time, bye. And once again, a big shout out to Cyberport. So go check out their links in the description if you are from Germany, Austria or Swiss. Until next time, bye.